So, so they wrote the, the highlights, really, or the, the top features that I think will come in to support the social. Now we're going to go and talk around some of the other exciting features that are coming in SharePoint 2013. So for those of you who are using SharePoint as your internet or website, perhaps, um, the content management has massively improved. So they've enabled cross-site publishing. So this is going to enable you to store and maintain content in an authoring site collection and display this content in several publishing websites or internet. So for example, if you have some content that's internal or it's going to be slightly changed for external basis, um, it's very easy for you to do that. Again, it could be that you've got that mobile style content versus web, web style content. So you've got the option to have both of those content and reusable in the same content, uh, in the same library. Also, there's predefined image sizes now. So for those of you, I'm sure I'm not the only one that's seen the pain of this one of resizing images, so you have to have three different sizes. You can have one image and you can customize those image sizes as you require. And it's very simple and easy. You don't need to get anyone with advanced technical skills in to help you with that one. There's also friendly short URLs. Finally, they come in in SharePoint 2013. It's simple and easy to embed videos, so they've enhanced the media player web part, so you can actually just go and quickly put in your videos in there. And then if anyone's um, using metadata, it's possible to have metadata navigation, so very similar to that that you see in search. You can have it based around those. So it enables you to define and maintain the navigation on a site by using term sets. The other big um, improvement that comes around enterprise content management is the Discovery Center. So the Discovery Center is another new site template which is coming through in SharePoint 2013, and it enables you really to just go through and start to share more sources of information and make your information easier to find. Um, it really it gives you the ability as well to um, support for searching and exporting files from file shares, if you're using Exchange, you're going to see a lot more integration with Exchange as well. And as it says here, seamless integration of Exchange and SharePoint within your team's folders. So um, a big enhancement for those of you who are using SharePoint for sort of your discovery or record management. Cloud app model. So Microsoft have gone to using apps. So I think this is going to be a massive improvement, giving you the flexibility to make your site achieve what you want it to actually do. So rather than having to buy a big application, you'll be able to just buy an app, which will fix a very small problem. So it's similar to the, the web parts, but it's now packaged solutions. So for example, the discussion forum is an app that you could put onto any site. So these are going to give developers the chance to actually go through and, and fix problems that are known in SharePoint 2013. They'll upload the app and then you can choose to have that app and then you can install it and then all users um, can use it if they would wish to have it. So it's like uploading a web part and enabling it for anyone to use throughout your organization. And again, these apps will be a mixture, so there will be an app store very similar to the iTunes or Play Store that we're used to seeing for mobile devices. Um, but as I said, there'll be a lot of apps um, I can envision that will be fixing business and social problems. So um, there'll be definitely a lot of those available, and they'll all be sitting within the cloud, so you'll be able to go and pick those up. So what will the App Store look like? It's very similar, as I said, to those that you're currently seeing if, you, if you're using apps on your mobile or tablet devices. So here you can see just some social ones. We've got Facebook, we've got Kodak, and there will also be, as I said, more business oriented ones. So there'll be one, if people have heard of the product Nintex, there would be a Nintex workflow app. And these will be priced at a, pretty, a reasonable price so that you can actually select them and use them as required. So these really will enhance the gaps of the out-of-the-box SharePoint 2013. And just to show how easy it is, you just select the app you want to have, you click to add it, and then you add it to a list. And then people can just pick it up and add it, very similar to the way that we would add a web part in SharePoint 2007 or 2010. So to talk a little bit about mobility, um, again, it's, it's the way that SharePoint is going. They've, they've really acknowledged the gap that they have in SharePoint 2010. 
So they've now enhanced it to make you have the ability to view your SharePoint documents, your text that you have on the page, etc., in both mobile devices and tablets. So, for example, it's very focused around um, and it will integrate with Windows 7. You will also be able to very easily see your Office mobile web app through there, so be able to go and see Excel, PowerPoint, Word. You'll be able to very easily push notifications, and one of the big enhancements you see around um, content management side is you can actually go and view how your content would look in a mobile view. And I think that would be very exciting for people who are actually trying to imagine what it would look like and having to go onto their mobile or tablet device to see how the content would appear. You can now do it on that screen. Okay, so search again, another big exciting feature. Um, what we've got is that FAST has been included now in SharePoint 2013. So for those of you who have may have looked at that product, um, you're now going to get all those features as out-of-the-box search with SharePoint 2013. So and my favourites are definitely around the thumbnail preview, the people search, and there's some big query improvements. So the query suggestions have taken a big leap forward in SharePoint 2010. Um, so it's really going to now track what you've been doing in terms of your activity and give you suggestions based around that. It will also use the analytics to give you information that has had more hits. So where will we see those main two improvements? They'll be really in the before and the after search query suggestions. So rather than just having to search, once you start to type, it will give you the items that you that you have clicked on before, but it will give you also a list of items that other queries similar to yours have been giving results back. So when you do the, the research results, so in the post way, um, you'll get a list of links that you have clicked through at least twice before and match your search criteria. I think search is one of the, the big reasons that people feel that SharePoint 2013 will be enhanced, so it's very exciting to, to see that FAST is coming online there as well. Final two areas now, so looking a bit around web standards. So the theme engine has been completely reworked in SharePoint 2013, and so it's now very much in base, based on HTML, and it will support HTML5. So PowerPoint is no longer used to create custom themes. So it's giving you the enhance to get um, richer themes and common building blocks for customizing them. So, sorry, so, a back, so you can have a background image, a palette, and font. And the amazing thing is, is you can have a live preview. So you can actually try it before you can go and see how it looks. And if it's not quite how you expect it to look, you can make a change there and then, and then set it live. So it's easier to match brand and be consistent. Okay, so analytics then is our final one, and then I'm going to hand back to Rob. So um, there's been a big change as well in analytics. It's no longer under Site Actions Web Analytics. You can now go and access it straight from within the ribbon. So what we can see here is on the ribbon there is now most popular items. So you'll be able to click on there and see what others are looking at. You'll be able to download usage reports, which are going to come in an Excel format, so you can go and make those edits as you require and make them appear. And you will have the ability to go through and look at sort of the clicks that people are doing, so the most views, the most views of a unique user, the most recommended clicks. So from using the advanced knowledge that people have when they go through and use FAST, and it's now going to come through and drive into the benefits with analytics. Okay, so it's very really exciting. Okay, so now I'm going to hand over to Rob. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> no, thank you, Jonah, for that super high-speed uh, introduction to some of the high-level capabilities of SharePoint 2013. Um, from a next steps perspective, I mean, just to confirm some of the timing. So, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're currently in a te technical preview mode of the product. So, the current release schedule is slated to be in December um, this year for the for the full release. Um, it's not clear, clear yet whether that's going to be just to um, certain subscription types, whether that's going to be to um, the general public as well. And these dates are, are changing on a seemingly a, a weekly basis at the moment. 
Um, one thing is clear, though, is that this is, this is um, going to be released within the uh, next six months. Um, a few key dates that are coming up um, as well around this are on the 12th of November, there's a global SharePoint conference in Las Vegas. Um, so um, that's really when um, uh, the Microsoft will release um, much more information around the specific dates and also they're going to be talking to things like the YAMA strategy, for example, and a lot more of this uh, behind-the-scenes information is going to become more public. Um, there's also a, uh, a, an Australian conference uh, on the 26th of November um, called SHARE, and that, um, I encourage you to, uh, to, to look into attending that as well because this is more focused on business users and it's an excellent um, um, conference. Um, before we actually get the main release in place, um, um, there's um, a few areas that can be done up front though. Um, the unique world of, um, sorry, Jacob, sorry, you for that. Jacob's are proposing a, uh, a readiness engagement at this stage because what we're finding is that a lot of organizations that um, implemented SharePoint 2007 and 2010 perhaps had uh, much more um, adoption than anticipated. And they struggle from issues, for example, you know, poor navigation, um, mismanaged metadata, information architecture, search, and maybe even some more fundamental issues such as stability or performance issues. So um, what we um, generally recommend to clients is um, if you're looking um, at moving towards SharePoint 2013, there's a great opportunity to um, take the opportunity to um, fix up some of these issues around IA and you know, governance and, and the technical platform as part of that migration. That's something that we can actually start work on now. So we have a, a, a package to offering around this where we basically will deliver a, um, a report which will have a, um, an overview of the current situation, some recommendations around how you can, um, um, when you make the move to um, SharePoint 2013, address some of the um, um, you know, pitfalls in the, your current implementation. Um, what we'll also do as part of that um, document is highlight some of the core areas in SharePoint 2013 where we feel um, you could maximize in, um, in the new deployment based on the capabilities available. Okay, um, so the last thing I'll touch on then is um, uh, basically if you're interested in getting on to SharePoint 2013 now, here's how you can do it. So there's three main ways um, and you'll be sent these presentation decks, you can get these um, links um, directly. Um, the software, the technical preview um, software is actually available for, for download, um, so that's option one. Um, option two is that there's companies, for example, CloudShare, and what they've done, they've already created um, SharePoint 2013 environments based on the, the publicly available software, and you can go there and, and spin up a multi-server environment on their um, hardware. So this is like a, um, a private cloud, because it's only you that will have access to that, um, that specific server. Um, now, the key thing here is that there is a trial offer. I think, I think you get access for four weeks, I believe, and then the, it's a subscription mode. Now, the third option, which is my, actually my recommended option, um, is the um, public cloud offering from Office 365. So, um, <coughs> this is, um, even though it's uh, packaged up as an Office 365 developer preview, um, the reality is if you go to this link, you can simply click on um, you know, um, a, a very basic sign-up form, and then you have access to a full cloud-based um, SharePoint 2013 uh, environment. Uh, and what we're seeing here really is you know, supporting Microsoft's increasing interest in cloud-based services. You'll notice that it's far more robust an experience than if you were to download and install the software locally because the, um, it's working on internet time, so things are patched rapidly and deployed to all of those um, um, Office 365 sites that are out there. So this is a fantastic way of, of getting on board and actually seeing um, you know, what the product does and kicking around yourself. Um, the main limitation you will see when you, when you do that third option, however, is that you can only create that for a single user. So you're not going to better have multiple users going in there and using it as a, as a pseudo live site. It really is just a, a preview for an individual. I'd like to thank um, Fiona for her time today and putting together um, a, uh, a, a, a very challenging presentation given that I, I know how much excitement she has for all the juicy things in SharePoint 2013. And thank you all for, uh, for attending as well. Thank you.